there we see this is exactly how we get lost now Pedro, I'll start off with you. After enjoying you uh, as a part of the great duo in, in The Mandalorian, we, we're, we're so excited to see you step into The Last of Us. Um, what excited you about this dynamic duo of Joel and Bella? Uh, Joel and Ellie, sorry. Joel and Bella, Joel and Bella and Joel, uh, Joel they, Pedro, <laughs> they, yeah, we, we, get, we get lost in it as well. We call it Jelly and Beldro. Belly and, and Jolo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jolo. Joe, Pedro and Joe, Jolo. There we see. This is exactly how we get lost. Now, let's crawl out of that hole. Um, it's a good question. That I think that there's such a there, there's such a good comparison between the dynamic of like uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu, and uh, Joel and Ellie, and for me, the incredible opportunity of like the double dipping. I guess it's like the perfect it's kind of the perfect double dip um because it, it 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 it's such a there's it's such a strong comparison and yet they couldn't be mm-hmm. more different in terms of um um how to i guess play it and experience it and um and and uh and yeah i i i i, I never thought i could find as good of a scene partner as uh as as uh, my little my little my little my little green kid and but but i i was wrong uh, <laughs> you're okay too <laughs> i definitely felt the same way um ellie is as is so makes the post-apocalyptic so fun so, because you're you're watching it through her eyes uh and it, you you kind of like get over the danger of it abella both these characters have been through a lot but they grow to rely on each other mm-hmm. what did you enjoy about how that aspect and that bond kind of evolves over this story yeah you're right i think when they first meet they are very much um like well they clash massively because we've been talking about the fact that they're very much mirrors of each other and when you see yourself reflected in somebody else so immediately and truthfully it's quite exposing and scary it's the biggest threat yeah exactly um but then i guess from that ten- i mean just by the situations that they're forced into they they have to sort of um allow it to be and an, an open up to each other slowly and gradually as they as they realize i think that they are similar and that maybe that's not such a bad thing um to be similar to each other and that um yeah and i i love how their relationship sort of progresses and dynamic and um and changes in, in our mine and yours i feel like did in, in a similar way we didn't get much chance to get to know each other before we started filming so we very much got to know each other throughout the process as ellie and joe did and i think that was a really nice parallel as well uh, pedro you posted it on instagram we hear it in the trailer you keep going for family that's joel's mantra why is that so central for his character I think that that for everyone it's it's how do you survive mm-hmm. and um and and what does it take to survive and 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 what is the point of um going on if there isn't something to live for and 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 um and f- for Joel it's 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 that it's it's family and and his biggest loss is is what defines who he is through most of the story and then for that um to imagine that he could lose something even bigger than that um uh after uh meeting ellie and and developing a a, a relationship uh to ellie that that you know it's everything that he is 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 not experiencing that kind of a loss again or being completely incapable of imagining a loss greater than that and then meeting it Mm. and so um i didn't answer your question at all but i got lost in um joel's uh tragic storyline craig it's great to talk with you uh chernobyl was such a grim and captivating series and now you're adapting the last of us which is so cool to see what excited you about collaborating with neil on the adoption of this like critically acclaimed game well i guess first 
I was excited by the fact that he made it because I'm a fan. I mean, I, I'm a gamer. I've been a gamer my whole life. I was so blown away by The Last of Us. I, it's a rare thing for me to watch something or play something and immediately wonder who made this. I want to meet that person. And that's how I felt when I played The Last of Us. So when I finally got to meet him, I was so excited. Shannon Woodward, who plays Dina in the second game, is a friend of mine. And obviously she worked with Neil and she kept telling me, oh, you guys would be the best friends. And I'm like, can I please meet him then? And, and we finally did. And uh, look, working with somebody who made source material, your worry is that they're going to be too precious. They're going to cling too much to it. Yeah. Uh, he was so generous and so smart and flexible and creative. I couldn't have asked for a better partner. And the characters in this, like you got Joel and Ellie. Um, why were Pedro and Bella the perfect pair to to bring these two characters to life? Because they are the crux of this series. Absolutely. And that was how we started. I mean, obviously we were writing, we had scripts, but casting wise, we weren't going to cast anybody until we had Joel and Ellie. We needed to know. Um, Pedro has this uh, innate... Uh, old-fashioned masculinity, but also this beautiful vulnerability. I mean, at the core of Joel is pain. And we needed to know that we had somebody who, when he was alone, could show you that pain and could feel it. Um, and then eventually to see how his exterior starts to soften with Ellie. And that's something that Pedro is so brilliant at. He's just wonderful at at maintaining both anger and and uh, violence but also then this beauty and this sadness and this love ellie we need uh, now ellie's a tricky one because ellie was portrayed brilliantly by ashley johnson in the video game ashley was in her 20s so you have this child who's 14 but who has kind of the mind and voice and cadence of a much older person so we needed to find somebody that was little and yet wise i mean wise is the key and funny and then also also violent also this hint of danger to her and bella ramsey has all of that it was it once we saw her reading you know doing one scene neil and i were just like there we go we got it Totally. Yeah, I saw that in Game of Thrones. You definitely saw it here, too. Yep. Um, outside the two of them, you still have, like, this stellar cast. You got, like, Nick Offerman and and, and Frank uh, Bartlett as, as Bill and Frank. And you got Melanie Linsky. What was it like putting together this wish list of, of people to bring these characters to life? Well, wish list is the perfect phrase for it. I mean, because, you know, we like to aim high, but then you think, well, sure, you know, but... How are we going to get Melanie Linsky or how are we going to get Neil Gofferman or any of the, the brilliant actors that we had? And um, time after time, people said yes. Anna Torv and Murray Bartlett. Uh, and I think they said yes because what we had written felt like its own thing. It didn't feel like we were just porting something from one platform to another. We had created a show that stands on its own. It, most of the actors hadn't played the game. Um, some of them just don't play any games. They just, what they do is perform. And they responded to the scripts. They responded to the material. And also, I think you start to feel confident in something as an actor when you see the other actors. When you know that Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey have said yes, well, something good must be going on, you know? Um, and we, you know, I, I don't think we're lucky as much as we worked really hard to earn the, those yeses from those kind of actors. And, uh, and like you played the game, uh, game adaptations can be a mixed bag. <laughs> mixed uh, is a <laughs> nice way of saying it. <laughs> but, but this game, um, blurred the lines between, uh, yeah. cinematic and the interactive. Yeah. Going fully into cinematic and fully into that that um, kind of realm, uh, what do you think is going to keep uh, viewers on their seats uh, from this adaptation? Well, if you've played the game, I think what you're going to find is there are these things that you crave to see, that you want to see, and you will. And there are relationships you want to see, and you will. 
There are individual lines you may want to hear, you'll hear them. But there's so much more. We have, because we have created this different experience where there isn't gameplay, there is just story and you are watching this unfold, it actually is scarier sometimes to not have any control whatsoever. Um, if you are not uh, somebody who played the game, this show stands on its own. You, you, will, you will not be able to tell that this is an adaptation of a video game any more than a really good adaptation of a novel feels, you know, it's its own thing. Um, I think we did a really good job of that. And I hope that people watching agree whether they're fans of the game or not. Neil, this is based on a game which you also wrote. The characters of Joel, Joel and, and Ellie are so central in this. Um, why were Pedro and Pedro and Bella uh, the perfect pair to bring these uh, characters to life? Well, for one, they're amazing actors um, and amazing actors that we felt could embody the attributes that made Joel and Ellie special. You know, for Joel, you're looking at this tortured man that has a this violent side, this like toughness, but more important than that is to show his humanity, um, his vulnerability, his pain. And we felt like Pedro um, could nail that. And we believe does nail that in the show. Um, again, that complexity of that internal struggle of that character. Uh, likewise with Ellie, we needed someone that's like wise beyond her years that um, is funny and quirky and yet has this like inner anger and this potential for great violence. And when we watched uh, Bella's audition, it was a slam dunk. There was no question in our minds of who needs to play Ellie. And the thing we weren't sure until we started rolling cameras is, will the chemistry be there? Because when we were making the game, one of the things we would always say, if we don't get this relationship right, the game fails. Same thing with the show. Um, and I am happy to say from my perspective, they kill it in more ways than one. Um, but uh, we got to see their bond kind of evolve on screen and off screen over the course of the entire season. Uh, and I'm glad to say that um, we got lucky again. We got another Joel and Ellie. Totally. I definitely felt that over the uh, first four episodes I, I watched. Uh, Merle Marlene is leader of the Fly Fireflies, which is a very interesting organization. What can you tell us about that organization and why Marlene is, is determined to fulfill their goals? Um, you know, one of the things that I love so much about, about Marlene is getting to wrestle with the things that she has to ha contend with, you know, putting the the greater good for the, the whole above self and and the sacrifices that she ha she has made, whether voluntary or involuntary. And I think that the 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 hope with the fireflies is for, for those people that that don't feel as though they they want this re this existing regime to um be our new normal that she holds that that lantern of hope for everyone that one we can go there is a possibility of going back to the way we were and then here comes that piece that might be the key, the key to it all and um there has to be that voice that 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 leads the rest of them that says um this is possible if if you only have the vision and uh, it's a hard place to be but um it's a a, a strong and powerful woman um can do that <laughs> and i believe marlene is one of those totally she totally sets joel on his mission um neil one of my favorite episodes of uh, the four that I watched was episode three. You assembled a great cast of, of characters that surround uh, Joel and Ellie, Nick Offerman as Murray, uh, Nick Offerman as Bill, uh, Murray Bartlett as, as Frank, uh, Melanie Linsky um, up in there. How excited were you, you to assemble such talent to kind of tell this story that you know so well? Oh, Casting is one of my favorite parts of, of production, you know, because you're like dreaming of the story in this world for so long. And it was a while, you know, Craig and I would would meet while I was finishing production in Last of Us Part Two and just break down the season beat by beat. We had like an outline for every episode before we submitted it all to HBO. So you're just you're using your imagination a lot. And then the first time the characters come to life is when you hear the an actor speaking their words and they're like, they're taking the material, reinterpreting it. So it was about 
you know, casting really strong actors that are going to just plus everything that we've put on the page and bring it to life in surprising ways, even for us, of like just how delicious their performances can be. Uh, you know, you mentioned that that episode with Bill and Frank, it's like there's a relationship that just hinted at at the game. And here we got to like fully flesh it out and see what it what their relationship is like. And, um, you know, with the, with the last of us, we really get to explore the themes of love and the beautiful things that could happen and the horrible things that could happen. And that episode kind of shows both, um, but really lends like this, this nice contrast of this, this beauty of like, here's a couple that got to win uh, in this, in this horrible world. Uh, and we get to see it uh, flesh that way, Nick and, and Murray. Uh, and Merle, I have to ask, taking Marlena's equation for a second, um, this story is about people making hard choices and, you know, stashing away supplies to survive. So if you had to make a journey across America, what are the two things that would be in Merle's supply kit? A water purifier and something to cut, a blade of some sort. Ooh, nice. That's such nice. a good answer. I would have said like a Steam Deck and like a soundtrack or something. <laughs> wouldn't have helped me at all. <laughs> uh, what made you excited to be a part of this game adaptation? Well, um, you know, you had to be living on Mars to not have heard of The Last of Us. It was uh, such a massive success, game of the year. Um, it and and I I knew of it. Of course, I knew of it and I had played it somewhat somewhat a little bit back when it first came out um but when when it came time when i sat with craig and talked about it and he said you know you're our guy and and uh it it, it kind of sank in pretty quickly that that i was once again kind of part of a a franchise with this legacy you know i think uh, i think with the ghost riders you mentioned and with terminator a lot of these you know, beloved uh ips you 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 want to you want to preserve it and protect it and and uh so the excitement was there and then i think a little bit of the pressure kind of intermingled with that but then um it all quickly dissipated once i got there on the day because you know you see how much everybody loves it and how hard everyone was working so it was great so you get to play Tommy, um, the brother of Joel, who's played by Pedro. You both shared some a uh, bunch of scenes together. What was it like, um, kind of crafting the the vibe between these two brothers uh, in the last one? It, it was it was pretty effortless when when I look back. Um, we we got on a FaceTime to when, once we we had the opportunity we got each other's contacts and we started FaceTiming each other and just having conversations and discussing our families and it was then that I learned that he in fact was uh, of course born in in Chile but but was raised in San Antonio Texas which is only eighty nine miles away from my hometown of Austin Texas which uh, of course if you play the game or anyone who knows the game that's that's where the the story begins and. Um, just just knowing that he and I were raised in the same place and then had in fact uh, had roots in the place where where the characters themselves grew um was was I mean just invaluable when it came to when it came time just to have that relationship and let it let it uh, unfold naturally um but we we spent a lot of time just talking with each other and uh he he, he kind of heard my speaking voice and wanted to find a way to 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 merge our our uh, our styles and our intonations. So he gave me a passage from Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian and asked me to read it for him. So I just read it, sent him an audio file, and we just kind of try to fit fit the voice, you know. Um, but yeah, we we had a lot already going for us, so we we uh, it was thankfully uh, pretty easy. That's so cool to hear. Um, now this show. Um, like p fans are used to, to to checking out narratives and and situations that are post apocalyptic, but to me, Last of Us is is very different and very fresh. What um, kind of what stands out to you that makes the story of Last of Us and the kind of situation that these characters are in? What makes that kind of compelling and fresh for you? I think for me, with the source material and, and and experiencing that, I think it was the 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 beauty and the and the the complexity of the characters, of the way Neil puts you in positions where you're always questioning your own actions. Um, that is that's rare in 
in in storytelling in general that you can really and that's what's so wonderful about games it's just the immersion where you can get in there and you can have these 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 feelings and and then also question um the actions you take but the um uh, i think that how that translates to our show is is all of these characters no one is truly good and no one is truly bad everyone is a gray hat so to speak and and that's um that's what's going to keep people you know kind of ch champing at the bed each week to get to, to to see more of these characters because you um you're 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 definitely taking a journey with them emotionally and 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 trying to unravel what there's what the psyche of a lot of these characters so uh i think i think that is is the common thread through both medium mediums and um and it's all thanks to neil and craig and 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 their great leadership cool man and finally taking tommy out of the equation if gabriel had to take a trek across america what would be in his supply kit you know i gotta go with uh you got to get some snacks, maybe something like, uh, I, I always liked the, the little, uh, what do they call with it? Well, you know, you got the, the crackers and the cheese and all that. I don't know if we have any oh. <laughs> handy snacks. Yes. And then, and then oh. of course the trusty shiv and, uh, and a bow and arrow. I like to keep things quiet when I'm, when I'm taking out these monsters, you know, you don't want to alert them to your presence. So I'll take a, I'll take a, a blade cause you don't have to reload a blade and, uh, and, uh, a bow and arrow maybe. So many fans are so excited to see the adaptation of this. I got to watch four episodes. So I just got to ask, uh, what made you so excited to be a part of this? What made me so excited? I think, um, well, I'd seen uh, a substantial amount of the existing material. I used to watch like YouTubers playing the game when I was younger. So I was definitely excited just because I was already a fan. Um, and then I think also just how many wonderful people are involved, like Pedro is incredible and Craig is wonderful and Bella is so talented and Neil's just a genius. So I think being able to work with all of those people was off the bat incredibly exciting. So I was just immediately drawn to it, of course. And of course, uh, just uh, of my watching of the first episode, we get to see you share a lot of scenes with Pedro um, playing his daughter, Sarah. What was your experience like sharing scenes with him and, and kicking off this Last of Us world? It was, um, I think kicking it off initially felt kind of daunting because it's such like, you know, we're really living up to a, a reputation, but Pedro is like truly one of my best friends. I speak to him all the time and I, it was so lovely because kind of as soon as we started, it was like, oh, you're going to be one of my friends for a really long time. And we immediately get on and kind of have an established relationship already. Um, so it was amazing. He's a wonderful scene partner. He's wildly talented and wildly funny. Um, and I just had the best time working with him. He's incredible. Awesome. Now, this post-apocalyptic story is is so harrowing. Um, and these two characters, um, uh, Joel and Ellie, have to make some hard choices, stashing away supplies to survive. If you had to make a journey across America, uh, what are the two things that would be a Nico's survival kit? I think in my survival kit, I feel like they wouldn't be very good at helping me survive, but I think me personally, they would probably help sanity wise. Um, music, I think any kind of music, whether that's like an iPod and headphones or like a cassette, I don't know anything, any form of music. Um, and then a lot of water, I think in a practical sense, I'm an avid water drinker um, and I feel like everyone should be so. Yeah, those two. <laughs> yes, I right. um, now, uh, a lot of people who are coming into this, uh, they may not know the world of Last of Us. So uh, if you could like set up um, set up the world, because a lot of people might look at it at the trailer and think it's like this zombie kind of apocalypse. Tell me a bit about the last the worlds that people jump in when they start watching this series. I think once you start watching Last of Us, I think what's important to kind of recognize is it's not like a kind of zombie thriller. It's a post-apocalyptic world in which a vast majority of the population has become infected uh and then that's kind of you know you lose your personalities and there's like different levels of being an infected person and whatever um as a result of this bacteria um and then it's following the journey of joel and ellie as he kind of is trying to help her out of this quarantine zone because she is a survivor and they're both survivors 
um, and all of the challenges that they face. I think it's, I mean, a wonderful story. Obviously, I'm biased. I obviously think that, but um, yeah, I think it's more than what kind of meets the eye. Totally. Um, Joel has this mantra, like you hear it in the trailer, you keep going for family. Um, what, why is that kind of like the crux of, of this series and, and what kind of propels these people forward? I think that what's so wonderful is that, especially what's something that's explored further in the series, is you see the backstory more so of each character. Um, and kind of their motivation for surviving. And I think that with all of them, that sense of like family or familiarity or just people that you love really and like make you feel like home are so important. And the losing of them or the, the forming of those relationships is kind of what perpetuates all of them to continue fighting. Um, so I, yeah, I think it's just for every single character that kind of message of the importance of family and love and friendship is embedded within them. Um, for all of them. Totally. And and finally, um, I know th this story because I, I played the game and I, I, I know why, why it's compelling, but for people who are jump just jumping into The Last of Us, why do you think this show will have them on the edge of their seats? I think, I mean, I think for a similar reason that the game is so compelling, I think because it really makes you feel things. I think that the characters are so well portrayed and there's so much emotional depth for everyone and i think that getting to watch people explore that in the game and now as a show i think is so interesting and you know i think it really inspires feelings for everyone i think it's i mean i think it's gonna be great like the video then hit the button or better yet drop us a comment then check out our latest videos here and don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button here for more celebrity interviews and entertainment news.